Let me take you back to the magical year that was 2018. Red Dead Redemption 2 just released, and you've spent weeks exploring the world, completing the story, and maybe, if you're a real guy, you've even 100% of the game. And that's when you sit there and you think to yourself, man, this game would be so much fun to play with other people online. And that's when, only a month after the release of Red Dead Redemption 2, Red Dead Online is released. A game that had so much potential, only to be abandoned and forgotten by Rockstar. Uh, quick fair warning, there will be clips from me as a prepubescent boy which may contain a fair bit of cringe. Please don't be mean to me. It all started back in November 2018 with the initial launch of the Red Dead Online beta. Back then, I was so excited to create my own outlaw and play online with my friends thinking of all the cool shit we could do. I thought that together we could start our own gang and commit all kinds of robberies like in the story mode. I thought we could go hunting and craft our own unique clothes like in the story mode. I thought we could go gamble and risk it all to make some money like in the story mode. I had high hopes for this online mode, except there was one issue. You couldn't gamble. You couldn't craft your own clothes with pelts, not that there were any animals to hunt because they would never spawn. And worst of all, in a game about being outlaws in the wild west, you couldn't do any robberies. And despite all these issues and flaws, this may have been the peak of Red Dead Online for me. Sure there was fuck all to do, but just being online and playing with your friends in those first few months was probably the most fun we would have in the game. Seeing that there was nothing to do, we had to make our own fun. We spent hours exploring the world, synchronized jumping on each other's horses, killing each other in the most ridiculous ways. Yeah, give me the books. Ah, what the hell? <laughs> and doing whatever we could to have some fun. These are the kind of memories you only get to experience once and wish you could go back to. Like I said though, there really isn't anything else to do. To make money back then, you only had a few options. There was a completely unrememberable online story that at the time was unfinished. Seriously, I can't remember a single thing from the story besides the Ned Kelly mission, which I don't even know if it came out at launch, but this is probably the only time I'll talk about the story, so yeah. Another thing you could do was the Stranger missions. These missions would have you go to a spot where a character would be waiting. These characters could range from familiar characters from the story or completely fresh faces made for the online. The last sort of mission based way to make money was from the PvP modes. This could either be deathmatches or races. The problem with this is that the payouts were absolute dog shit. You would complete a mission and get paid and you still wouldn't be able to afford a can of beans. And all this is made even worse by everything costing a fuck ton. Seriously, on launch the Mauser pistol cost a thousand dollars. Because of this, me and my mates decided to make our own money making strat. It was to go to Owenjilla Lake and fish for salmon because they sold for around 4 bucks each, so this was probably the quickest way to make money at the time. Now if you're a Red Dead Online veteran or have just played the game at all, you've probably noticed I haven't talked about one of the main features of the game, in what I believe to be the start of the end for Red Dead Online. Gold Bars if you don't know about gold bars in Red Dead Online, they're basically the premium currency of the game. This was the currency that you could spend your own real life hard earned clams to buy. Gold could be used as an alternative way to buy stuff like if you don't have enough cash. Or if you aren't a high enough level to buy something, you could just use gold bars to bypass the level lock. In some cases for some items, gold was the only way to buy stuff. Well, I can only take gold for that, I'm afraid. Picture this, alright? You've been playing races for the past half an hour, and this guy on his chestnut Arabian keeps absolutely smoking you because your horse is an asthmatic and can't run more than a couple meters at a time. So you decide to back out and head to the stables to buy a better horse than him. You see the Arabian, but it costs hundreds and you're too poor to buy it because everything has a shit payout. You keep looking through the stables until you find a better horse than the chestnut. The only catch is that it costs gold. Now you have two options. Go do missions for hours and get paid three frog knuckles and a crab leg each time. Or give Rockstar your personal doubloon so you can get the video game gold to buy the video game horse. Do you want to grind for hours or pay to win? This was the issue with gold bars. Like I said earlier though, I believe this was the peak for Red Dead Online. Sure there wasn't anything to do, but just being able to experience this game with your friends was so much fun and my hopes were high for the future of Red Dead Online. There was just so much potential for Rockstar to capitalize on.
Man, you don't don't even <laughs> do that, man. Get off him. Yeah, yeah. Get off him, man. <laughs> don't even do it. Which one is the music, mate? Ignoring the Lamb Battle Royale update, I'd say the next notable update was the February 2019 update. This update added a few new features like new weapons and clothing, but one feature stood atop as the best feature by far, daily challenges. These challenges, when completed, would earn you both XP and gold. This is made way better when you get to a streak of 28 days. This is because when you pass the 28 day milestone, you'll be earning 50 gold nuggets per challenge which is half a gold bar. So if you were to complete all 7 challenges, you would be earning a total of 5 gold bars daily. I remember I used to have a streak of over a year when this came out. Sometimes logging on, completing a challenge and hopping off just to keep the streak alive. I did this because at the time I saw some people online saying they would be adding a mansion in Saint Denis, which would cost 600 gold bars and I was determined to buy it. Anyways, to sum it up, the February 2019 update was a small one but it added one of the biggest features in the game's history. The next update in May of 2019 saw the end of the beta and came with a fair amount of new content. This included bug fixes, new stranger and story missions, new weapons and clothing, dynamic events, and best of all, you could finally gamble online with the release of poker, where you would verse other players online. All in all a solid update, but it was nothing compared to what was next. This next update was the update of all updates. This was the biggest and best update in the history of Red Dead Online. This was the Frontier Pursuits update. The main thing this update introduced was new roles. These were new activities or businesses that you could purchase for 15 gold bars each. The first role, and the one most people were probably excited for, was the Bounty Hunter role. This role would have you go to the bounty board in each town to select a bounty to hunt down and bring in either dead or alive. Additionally, there were legendary bounties, which loaded you into a mission where a cutscene would play, showing the bounty and the crimes they've committed. New legendary bounties would be added in the weeks after the release of the update until there were 10 bounties in total. These missions were a lot more fun and paid out way more than the normal bounties. Speaking of pay, it's time to talk about the weird payout system. I didn't mention this before, but it follows the same payout system that the Stranger missions have, where the longer you take, the more you get paid. Because of this, if you wanted to get the max payout, you would have to capture your target, then just stand out the front of the sheriff's office until there were 30 seconds left. On top of this, for some reason, you would get paid significantly less if you bought the target in dead, kind of defeating the purpose of having dead or alive on the poster. This was also the only role that would pay out with gold, excluding challenges. Even with the horseshit payout system, this was probably the most fun of all the roles, made even more fun if you were to play with your friend. Just a side note, when this came out I made a video on an old channel where me and my mate Rob played as two dumb bounty hunters with shit accents. It was probably the most we laughed the entire time playing this game and if you find that video I'll probably have to assassinate you. Anyways, the second role was the trader. In this role you would start a trading business with Crips, the old fella who takes care of the camp. In this role, you would have to hunt animals and bring them back to the Crips' work table. Once delivered, Crips would start to create product which would be sold for a good profit. You had a choice of selling it near to your current location for a quicker and safer sell mission, or you could sell it further away for a higher profit, but it's more dangerous. The main danger during these sell missions was actually other players, because they could kill you and destroy your product for a small reward. So if you saw anyone on the map, you would quickly become paranoid and be ready to shoot at any sign of danger. You could also be attacked by NPCs, but they didn't really pose much of a threat. The last and by far the most profitable role was the collector. In this role, you would explore the frontier looking for rare treasures, which could be sold to the traveling saleswoman, Madame Nazar. This role came with new tools such as the shovel and the metal detector, which would help you find valuables. You would set out to collect a wide variety of different items such as tarot cards, jewelry, flowers, eggs, and ancient artifacts. Each individual item could be sold for a fair price, but if you wanted to make some real cash, the trick was to sell complete collections. Each collection would snag you a couple hundred each. But you're probably thinking, Sure it pays a ton, but how would you know where to get the collectibles? Well, shithead, that's a valid question seeing as every day the collectibles locations are switched. 
and there's no way of knowing what's where. Yeah, that was an issue until some absolute fucking legend released an interactable Red Dead Online collector's map. With the help of this bad boy, you could track what was where and how to get it every, every single day. day. This made it super easy to complete collections to sell to big girl Madame Nazar for some fat stacks, making it by far the best way to earn cash in the game. Each roll also came with 20 levels, which you could progress through to earn new rewards like clothing, horses, equipment, weapons, and player upgrades and skills. Of course Rockstar had to jump on the trending video game feature bandwagon and added a battle pass. More specifically, the Outlaw Pass. This Outlaw Pass cost 35 gold bars to get the premium version, which included exclusive rewards like 25% Royal XP boost, vouchers, parcels, cash, gold, and cosmetics like clothing, emotes, and camp upgrades. Like I said, this was probably the best content update to come out in the game's entire lifespan, and it was only downhill from here. Following the success from the Frontiers update, Rockstar knew they had to focus on releasing new roles, which led to Moonshiners being added in the next update. This role allowed players to do a much wanted feature, which was to own a property with the Moonshiner Shack. To become a Moonshiner, you first had to meet up with old big girl Maggie, who would allow you to buy the shack for 25 gold bars, a 10 gold buy increase from the previous roles. There were 5 locations where you could choose to buy the shack, Bayou Noir, the Grizzlies, Hennigan's Stead, The Heartlands, and Tall Trees. This role also came out with a new story focusing on Big Mags and her previous business partners. You could also open a bar under the shack which could be fully furnished, and even included a band if you purchased the upgrade. To start making shine, you had to bring ingredients to the Cook Marcel, who can make different flavours which pay out differently. You also had to resupply the steel, which could be done through a resupply mission or purchased if you had the cash. Once the shine was ready, you would do a sell mission similar to the trader ones, except you had to be more cautious with the wagon, because you would lose money if it took damage. Overall, the Moonshiner was a fun role and a pretty solid way to earn some mostly passive cash. The Naturalist role was the last and worst role to be added to the game. Let me explain. For the low price of once again 25 gold bars, you could go around the map locating animals and sedating them to take samples which could be sold to this stank bitch Harriet. Yeah, in the game about outlaws, you're peacefully tranquilizing beasts and critters and taking their blood or whatever to some crazy homeless woman. To make things even worse, if you've killed too many animals, whether on purpose or by accident, if you wanted to talk to Harriet, she would not said spray you with some Bill Cosby shit knocking you out. There's really no point in playing this role again after you've done all the content. There was some good stuff added in this update though. Mainly legendary animals. These legendary animals could be sampled for Harriet, or if you're a real man, you could kill them and sell the skins to big man Gus, who could then craft a cool coat for you. Throughout this video, I haven't specifically talked about any of the new guns that have came out during the updates. But the elephant rifle will be my only exception because it's so fucking goofy. So basically when you shoot this gun, it fires with so much power that you're flung back instantly. It doesn't really have any practical use, I just think it's funny. So for the next update, Rockstar decided instead of making a new role like everyone wanted, they're just going to add more stuff to an old one, the bounty hunter role. To be honest, having new content for the bounty hunter could have been a good thing if they didn't charge you an additional 15 gold bars to access the new content. Now you're probably thinking, if it costs as much as the initial price of the bounty hunter, then we must get double the content, right? And I would say to you that you're a fucking idiot for even thinking that. This is Red Dead Online we're talking about. So for an additional 15 gold on top of the first 15 gold, you get only 10 new levels which unlock mainly cosmetics, some new free mode bounties, and only three new legendary bounties, are you fucking kidding me? To put the icing on the cake, not only did Rockstar release the laziest content update in the game, they also fucked with the main thing that kept me coming back every single day, daily challenges. Now, the challenges only paid at half of what they did before, and even worse, the streak would reset after the 28 days. So now the streak that I had for over a year was completely gone. This update really showed that Rockstar had fully stopped caring about the community and only cared about their money. I know things seemed dark during this time in Red Dead Online, 
But then when the community was at their lowest, Rockstar Games let out a shining beacon of hope with their newswire about the next update. In this newswire, they finally promised to add proper crime into a game about outlaws in the Wild West. Quote, Crimes will range from cloak and dagger coach holdups to multi-stage robberies, including kidnapping, brutal debt collections, and more. Finally, players could stick up townsfolk, rob trains, and commit bank robberies with their gang. At least that's what players thought, until the update finally came out. It turns out all the crime and outlaw activities Rockstar promised would be added turned out to be glorified stranger missions. Yes, instead of adding the stuff we wanted to free roam, instead we just got new blood money missions. And what about these multi-stage robberies that we thought were going to be heist? What were they? Well, they turned out to be three new missions that you had to pay a new currency to play. Yes, in this new update, Rockstar decided to add a new currency called Capitale that you needed to play the new missions. The way you earn Capitale wasn't by playing the new blood money missions, however. Instead, you had to play the new blood money missions and either loot it off an enemy or find it in a chest while playing the mission. So what happens when you have enough Capitale to play one of these multi-stage robberies? Well, you pay the Capitale to some Italian fella, so you get the opportunity to go steal a rare gem for him. Yes, that's right, you have to pay someone to go steal something for them. And if you got bored grinding for Capitale, you could go to the fence and buy them with gold bars, which you could buy with your real life money. If Capitale wasn't a feature, I'd say it'd be a bit below mid compared to the other updates. But because it does have Capitale, this update went right down the shitter continuing Rockstar's streak of shit and lazy updates. And as it turned out, this was actually the last major content update added to Red Dead Online. This is because Rockstar announced that they moved their resources into creating GTA 6, leaving Red Dead Online abandoned. I've been wanting to make this video for so long because I believe this game had so much potential. I mean they had the perfect blueprint with Red Dead 2, but it was just ruined by constant greed and wanting players to buy gold bars. Players just wanted to experience the freedom and excitement they got from playing the story but with their friends. Instead, we got a game that was constantly neglected and never got to live up to its full potential. Now I 
I go.